evaluating the Packers draft needs post free agency. So the way we broke it down is basically we have like tiers. Um, so tiers one through four, and it basically assesses like the need or how we view the need. So Nick, what is the first tier and what position we can go position by position um, for tier one? So tier one is what Blake and I believe are day one starters. These are people that we need to draft that are going to make an impact immediately. These people are going to be playing week one, opening day, and we're ready for them to help win the Packers ball games instantly as soon as they join the team. The first position, no surprise, is wide receiver. And the wide receiver position for the Packers has been something that the Packers have needed to build for the last few years. Rodgers just needs another weapon out there. He has Devontae Adams, and then it really falls off. There's Alan Lazard's not bad, but he's not that number two mm-hmm. receiver. We'd really like someone else there. Um, Dad Funches is coming back this year. It's going to be really yep. interesting after him taking a year off. He has not played a game for the Packers yet. I'm excited to see what he does, but we definitely need a wide receiver that can start right away and help Aaron Rodgers make plays. Yeah, so I think you kind of hit it right on the head, nail on the head there. So we have, obviously, pass catching wise or just like receivers wise, the receiver position alone, Devontae Adams, really obviously amazing, top five receiver, this, that, the other. Number two is Alan Lazard. He's a okay number two. He really is. If he was a three, he'd be an insanely good three, in my opinion. One of the best run blockers, um, really good at like deep balls, he I think if you remember the Saints game, and he's had a few other games, Rams game two, he can catch deep balls off play action pretty fast, really tall. Rodgers trusts him. I think that's why he's gotten as far as he has. He was a practice squad guy for a minute. So um, with the Jaguars and others, I I wish he didn't go to Iowa State, but I'm going to stop talking about him. Um, and then next we have Marquez Valdez-Scantling, averages over 20 yards a catch, uh, drops a lot of passes though which is kind of the issue. And he's not the best number three after that, not the best. So Malik Taylor, um, Equinemia St. Brown, uh, Tyler Irvin, if you'd consider him a receiver. So he's he's kind of a flex. He can play in the back. Yeah. yeah, He's more of a a running back than a receiver, but Mm -hmm. but regardless. Um, So that is a need. And we have um, done some virtual mock or not virtual mock virtual interviews. So with a couple guys who are receivers. So the first one, we've talked about him. We did a video on him, Rondale Moore. Um, So we've done interview with him. And then the only other like receiver we've done is Demetric Felton. He's a running back slash receiver from UCLA. So this is definitely a need. Nick, where do you think we should draft a receiver? So I am very much against taking a receiver in the first round. I do Mm -hmm. not think receivers should be used in the first round there's just so many of them and they're pretty risky in the first round when there's other needs as well but I would be fine taking a receiver in the second round Rondell Moore we had a great interview with him he was even posting about the Packers on his socials yeah and um he's a guy as you said earlier that could play wide receiver but also like flex as like jet sweep guy running the backfield a little bit like because he's very explosive when he gets the ball and he can make plays in open field and with people in front of him. But I do not want to take Rondell Moore in the first round. Yeah. I don't think he'll get to the second round, but I'm ready to take a wide receiver in the second round, not the first round, because there are other needs, which brings us to our next tier one position, offensive tackle. So near the end of last season, David Bakhtiari tore his ACL which sucked because the Packers had the number two ranked offensive line. And I believe offensive lines win championships. And that really hurt the Packers late in the season because Billy Turner is a great guy, but the perfect scenario is when he's at guard and Bakhtiari is at tackle on opposite sides, Billy Turner, right guard, Bakhtiari, left tackle. That's when the Packers do best. So we need an offensive tackle that can come in right away and play the first few weeks because Bakhtiari ain't going to be ready to go right away since he tore his ACL at the end of the season, and that's a pretty long injury. He'll be ready by midseason, probably after the first few weeks, but he's not going to be ready week one. Yeah. Yeah, and to your point, so Billy Turner, he played left tackle, right guard, right tackle. So like his versatility is awesome. Elton Jenkins, he can play tackle if he needs to, like he can literally want him at guard though. We want him at guard. Yeah. We prefer him at guard, possibly center. Um, 
So I think the ideal offensive line for us and how I view it is like Bakhtiari, left tackle, Elton Jenkins, Runyon, Lucas Patrick, and then a couple of the other guys that we drafted, they can fill out the interior, left guard and center. And then I would want Bernard the right guard, ideally. He can kick out to tackle, right tackle. Like that's not a problem, but he's better at guard, I think. And then if we drafted a tackle round one, that's where I think our old line would be awesome. And mm-hmm. you did mention two back TRs out. So like we'd ideally want to have someone there that we can trust. I know we have Nijman who um, hasn't seen the field too much. He's like, they're, our also, they're saying Simon Stepaniak who we drafted in last year's draft mm-hmm. might be that opening day guy, which he just hasn't played yet. So yeah. I don't know if I want him protecting Rogers when he just hasn't played. He was a later round pick sixth round. Mm-hmm. So we need someone who can, we know we can play. And I really think they might hone in on the ground, um, especially after seeing the confidence that they're showing in either the, some of the younger guys, which I don't know if that's what it is, or the fact that they're going to draft someone. Because they did release um, they did release Ricky Wagner. And so we have the 29th pick in the draft is our first rounder. So maybe they go guard – or sorry, maybe they go tackle – Um, or another O-line position, like if they went right guard or guard and they just had Billy Turner kick out to right tackle permanently. So interesting to see with that. And now, Nick, what would be the next spot, unless you have any more thoughts on tackle? So as you're saying, like, yeah, Billy Turner, he could play tackle. We don't want him at tackle, though. We want him at guard. Yeah. And that's where he belongs. That's where he plays his best. So our last tier one position is inner D-line. We made a couple of videos earlier where we talked about like, oh, what if we got JJ Watt? Yeah. If we got a couple other players. We didn't get them. We we knew we probably weren't going to get them. Mm-hmm. Neither of us really wanted JJ Watt either. Like we would, we wanted him, but he was also really expensive, so we were okay. Yeah, that we didn't practical. Sign him. it wasn't practical for the Packers to go out and get JJ Watt. But Kenny Clark, he got paid a lot last year, and he started slow, but then he started returning to the reason he gets paid a lot. He is really good at stopping the run, but he needs a guy beside him who can also help him stop the run, which is why we need to draft an inner D lineman that can come and play right away and help Kenny Clark stop that run. Yeah, so looking at the interior D line, I feel like it's been a weakness for the last couple of years. Um, Once Mike Daniels kind of got old and left, it's been problematic. So right now, depth chart, uh, Kenny Clark's the nose tackle, zero tech, right lines right up over the center. And then to the left and right of him, It's kind of a rotation of Kingsley Kiki, who's going to be in his second year. He's shown some promise, but I'm not really too confident in him starting. Dean Lowry, who hasn't really performed to his contract level. And then Tyler Lancaster, who's more of a rotational guy that they brought back. I'm totally cool with Lancaster being like the fourth, third or fourth guy. Yeah, but we don't want him out there. He's playing like Mm -hmm. significant minutes. That's when it's kind of an issue. Um, So, yeah, there's. There's a couple guys, one guy who I want to talk about a little bit, Aleem McNeil out of NC State. So okay. he's, he's typically a nose tackle, but this dude is so good against the run. He's massive too. Like like I said, he's a nose tackle, um, doesn't offer much for pass rushing, but against the run, he would help shore up a lot of those issues that we have. And um, he eats double teams. So him and Clark eating double teams would be awesome to watch. I think he'd be a great addition um in the second maybe third round if he slips that would be sweet but um Ali McNeil's the guy that I want and I hope we get but that's just a quick little thing and I'm sure we might might draft him later in the mock but all right we can move on to the next position now yeah so we have the 29th round pick or the 29th pick in the first round and we don't want a wide receiver there we've said we want an O tackle or energy line but now we're going to go to our tier two positions and these are the players that will play like every week, but they won't start. They'll just be the guys that come in on third down or come in when other players are tired. They're going to play. They're just not going to start. Yeah. And we'd be fine with taking these players in the first round too. So yeah. the first position that we have in tier two is cornerback. And cornerback used to be a tier one for us when we just had Jair and Kevin King was a free agent, but then we re-signed Kevin King. And we're not ex- like super excited about Kevin King, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll accept him. And obviously, game against the Bucks in the playoffs where 
all Packers fans were very upset yeah. with Kevin King. He allowed about three touchdowns in. Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, get rid of him. He should never play for yeah. Packers again. But once that blew over, we signed him for pretty cheap. And he's he's a good corner, too, when he's healthy. He wasn't healthy at the end of the year. But when he's healthy, we can accept him as a corner, too. But yeah. we still want another corner that maybe won't start over Kevin King. Maybe will. Maybe won't, though. And just comes in as that other guy, that our other option. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, kind of off that, Kevin King's deal is only one year. So, mm-hmm. Like, we've seen what happens in the past if we don't invest in corner. Uh, 2016 playoffs against the Falcons happens when Ladarius Gunter signed off the street or practice squad is guarding Julio one-on-one. Um, and so we have invested heavily over the years. I mean, think of think of Jair in the first, Josh Jackson in the second, Demarius Randall. we took him in the first. He played corner a lot for us. Quentin Rollins in the second. They took Josh Jones. He's more of a safety, but still, they've invested a lot. But I think they need to either um, – maybe they draft a slot guy in the mid-rounds um, or because we have Chan and Sullivan there, and he's okay. You could definitely improve that. But he's a slot guy. If they guy. want a guy okay who can slot. come in and – yeah, he's all right. Like, he's not the worst, but he definitely gets torched a little bit. Um, there, there could be a better guy there. Yes, I agree. Yeah, there could be better. It could be worse. He's okay. But if Kevin, we've seen Kevin King get injured a lot, and that's kind of been one of the issues with him is health. The, the past two years he's been healthy, but before that he really wasn't. And then if Jair goes down, like what are we going to do? Because we don't really have the best of depth. We have Kadar Holman, who we drafted late, uh, Josh Jackson. Uh, I previously mentioned him. He played a decent amount last year, but didn't look the best. Yeah. A lot of. A lot of defense pass interferences. So getting a guy in the second would – maybe he doesn't have to start right away, but he could play a significant amount of time due to injury. And then also you can never have enough corners. There's always going to be three receivers on the field um, on third down most of the time. And, again, a lot of teams do run um, with two to three receivers. So, All right. So that wraps up the cornerback at Tier 2. We have another Tier 2 position. It's also mm-hmm. defense. It's inner linebacker. And we're re- – defense because i mean the packers got to the nfc championship game the last two seasons and lost both times and rogers didn't play poorly like he had good games we just need to stop the other offenses and we're able to get to the playoffs but we really need those players once again this is a player that won't start but will come in so we need those players that we need depth on our defense and we both agree that our defense is lacking in depth. We have those top tier guys, but we don't have that throughout the whole defense, which is why a couple more or another inner linebacker that plays won't start, but will play would be very, very helpful for the Packers defense in the long run in that postseason, getting us over the hump, winning two more games to be world champions. So I actually think if we took an interior line or an inside linebacker in the first or second, I probably think they would start. Okay. But I think the main reason that we labeled it tier two is more of the fact that we have two young guys, Kamal Martin and Chris Barnes, who who got, who flashed last year. They looked solid for where we drafted them. They got the job done for the most part. Kirksey wasn't the best in the beginning of the year. He picked it up in the end, but we cut him, save Cap. Yep. Um, so I think if we took a guy in the first or second here, I wouldn't be opposed. Now, I, d- I highly doubt this will happen. I think we've seen the Packers neglect this position. I feel like they always take it in like the fourth round. I, we took Jake Ryan there. We took uh, Blake Martinez in the fourth. And then, I, I don't think we're taking an inner linebacker in the first two rounds. I don't I, either. I don't think we are. If we did, I would not be opposed. There's a couple guys, one, one or sorry, two for sure that I kind of like. Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa, mm-hmm. freak athlete. Um, would definitely be a playmaker for our defense. And then Jeremiah owusu Koromoa, he's a really good coverage linebacker. Now, will these guys even make it to 29? I know owusu Koromoa probably won't. I don't think – I don't know if Zayvon Collins will either. So that's where the issue is. But if they took a guy in first or second that's really good in coverage or, um, or just, you know, a really high-profile athlete, that would add a lot to our defense, um, especially run defense. I, I mean, I feel like we haven't had a really good inside linebacker since Desmond Bishop in like 2010. It's been too long. It really has been. Um, it's been a while. 
But yeah, like I said, the guys we have are like, they're promising and we have them for the next three years, really cheap. So maybe they want to develop them more. Um, and I like Chris Barnes a lot. I think he has potential as, as being a run stuffing linebacker. He's really instinctive. I do too. So that'll wrap up our tier two. And now we're going to go back to the offense. We just talked a lot about defensive players. Mm-hmm. Tier three is, these are just development players who are future needs. They're not going to come in this season. They might not even come in the next year, but these are players that in the future, we're going to need them. And to start that off, we have running back. So the Packers just re-signed Aaron Jones. We took yeah. A.J. Dillon in the second round last year. And I like A.J. Dillon a lot. He showed a lot in the couple games that he played. He scored a couple touchdowns. And mm-hmm. the Packers lost Jamal Williams this offseason. Jamal Williams was a really, really good second back to Aaron Jones. He had no fumbles. He's never fumbled in his career. Obviously, he didn't have as many carries as Aaron Jones mm-hmm. does. But now we have Aaron Jones, and backing him up, we have A.J. Dillon. And I think that's solid. But A.J. Dillon was the third guy last year. Jamal Williams is gone. So now we need another third guy. He might only get a few carries this year, but he'll be a future guy. Because yeah. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon aren't sticking around for other forever. And running backs are very, like – they don't last long always. They, ever, they, can, yeah. they could be gone in a year. You just don't know with running backs. They're very unpredictable, yeah. and they don't have long careers compared to these other positions. Yeah, I think that's important to point out. Like Running back shelves lives are among the lowest in the league. Mm-hmm. And they usually it's a position, if you draft it, like they can come in and instantly make an impact no matter what the round. You remember this past season, James Robinson, undrafted free agent, came in, had mm-hmm. over 1,000 rushing yards with the Jags. <laughs> So it's definitely a transferable, pretty easy to transfer from uh, college to NFL for and succeed. There's not as much of a learning curve as, say, a cornerback or a quarterback um, or even a safety for that matter. Like those positions, there's a steeper learning curve. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, so besides Dylan and Jones, we kind of need like a good pass blocker. And then I would say like a receiving type guy. Um that would be right the, now. Right now, if we don't get one, it's Tyler. Irvin. It is. That's who that third yeah, guy is. Right? Yeah, but he does more like the gadget stuff, like uh huh, like the flex role that we kind of talked about with Rondell, like Rondell Moore would do. What Rondell Moore would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, I feel like he doesn't block much, but yeah, like I feel like another guy would definitely be more ideal. And they did bring in JV and Hawkins from Louisville for a visit. Now, I'm pretty sure this dude is really um, – he's supposed to go later in the draft, but he's a, he's a short dude. He's 5'9", so I think he would fit that mold of, like, maybe maybe being, like, a flex and then that third down back or just the third guy. Someone's mentioning Giovanni Bernard. That would be interesting. He was just cut. Know. He was just cut. Yeah, he was just cut by the Bengals. I don't know if we have the cap room or how much he would command. Hopefully not much if we were to sign him. I don't him. think that expensive. Our cap room. <laughs> I don't really know if I want him either. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got to sign or sign our rookie class, and I think that's where our cap space would go, and we usually save some money for an in-season like signing. So I doubt we'd get Gio Bernard, but a third running back is definitely something for the future is bottom line. Our next Tier 3 position is Edge. Right mm-hmm. now we have Rashawn Gary and Zardarius Smith, and they are amazing. I love them. Uh, Zardarius Smith, one of the best in the league. Rashawn Gary, he was our first-round draft pick two years ago. He's coming up. He's, he's becoming one of the best in yeah, the league. Yeah, he's good. Two years ago, it was the Smith brothers, Rashawn Gary and Zardarius Smith. We did re-sign Preston Smith, and like he has fun too. He's He had good. At, he was good at the end of last season, but I really think this is the year Rashawn Gary is going to break out, which is why this is a future need. This isn't a player that we need right away. We're not going to use a first or second round pick on this again after using a first round pick on this two years ago. So Darius Smith and Rashawn Gary are going to hold it down. But so Darius Smith isn't going to be around forever. Does he have two years yeah. left, I think? So he'll be yeah, here two more but, seasons. Yeah, they're talking extensions with him. You okay. Know, Rashawn I, Gary should be around for a while. So he's played for two years. So he still has mm-hmm. two years and then a fifth-year option. Yeah. So yeah, but besides them three, we dr- we have one other younger guy who's like shown promise, but not really much in that department. So if there's like an injury, or e- if there was two injuries, we'd be starting Gary or the non-injured guy, and then 
kind of someone really inexperienced who doesn't have a lot of play time. So getting someone, maybe an athletic freak that we can just have sit, come in occasionally on passing downs, kind of where we're looking um, yeah. at edge. We're going to stay with the defense. Our next tier three position is a safety. Mm -hmm. And right now the Packers, two safeties that are out there starting, Adrian Amos and um, Darnell Savage are You're amazing. Combo. I love watching them. They love working together. They have a lot of fun. Whenever one of them makes a play, they're always hyping each other out. Yeah. Darnell Savage is the younger one. Adrian, Adrian Amos came up from the Browns a couple years ago. Bears. But the Pack or the, the Bears, sorry. Yeah. And um, the Packers like to bring in a third safety, though, a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's a guy that we could get now and develop so he could become that guy in the future. And but the two safety starting are locked in. Those are core positions. Yeah. We don't need to worry about replacing those anytime soon. Not for the next couple of years, at least. But we do need someone. We do need to always think about the future. So to your point, the third safety. So that was Will Redmond last year. We re-signed him this year. So that's why it's kind of the tier three. We also drafted Vernon Scott seventh round last year. So maybe if they don't like what they're seeing from Scott or they just want someone new in there and they like a prospect. That's why we have it at tier three. I wouldn't be surprised though if they bump if it was like a tier two thing and yeah. they took it could be a tier two. It definitely obviously won't be a tier one, but they could play. They yeah. Could play. Um, so like they could get experience in that. And then also I know they like and value versatility. So if they if there was like a tweener guy that they're like, okay, they he can play third safety slash nickel corner, that could be something. Or we didn't re-sign Raven Green, who was kind of our strong safety, like inside linebacker guy. Mm -hmm. And that's what Josh Jones was supposed to be or fill that need. He's no longer with us. So if they wanted went that route and drafted like a safety who became a box safety and just like a inside linebacker and was a little undersized, like I could realistically see that. And he's in there for coverage more. Um, it all just depends on if they value that as a big need right now. Um, or maybe they want to re-sign Raven Green, you know, who knows? So that's our it. last tier three positions are guard and center on the mm -hmm. offensive line. So in the perfect world, we just have Elton Jenkins as left guard and Billy Turner as our right guard. We just lost Corey Lindsley at center, but mm -hmm. we still have people to fill that in because our offensive line is strong. Once Bakhtiari's back, we should have probably the best offensive line in the league. I really do think we do. Mm -hmm. Maybe definitely top five. Top but five usually, yeah. I think we have one or two. And we just need another guard or center to develop because the Packers are really good at developing offensive linemen yeah. to come in, but they don't re-sign offensive linemen very often. So once these linemen's contracts are going to end, they're probably going to leave. In the past, like Josh Sitton, Corey Lindsay, those are just a couple of the people that eventually leave the Packers after we develop them. But And also, offensive linemen get injured a lot more than people realize. They do yeah. come out a lot, even if it's just for a week or two. You need people that can fill that spot because that's who's protecting the man, the guy who's controlling the game, which is for us, Aaron Rodgers. And yeah. that's how we're going to win ball games is Aaron Rodgers. And if he's not protected because someone goes down, we need someone to back up, which is why we need to start developing these players now. Yeah, so we took three last year, and that's why it's really not that pressing of a need. Um, mm -hmm. But – so we took three last year. We have Elton. We have Lucas Patrick. But if a couple – so, like, three of those five could start at guard and center realistically. So that's three. If Billy Turner's pushed out to the outside, which is looking likely for the first few weeks, mm -hmm. um, and then if maybe they don't like one of those guys' development or they want to take, a like, a flyer on someone who's really athletic, that's where I think it'd come in. I kind of disagree with like the re-signing. I feel like we'll re-sign guys to a second contract, but like once once the second contract expires, that's when I feel like they let them go. Okay. Like Sitton, yeah. Lang, and Lindsley were all on. They all did two contracts, but their third contract yeah. is when they started. They, getting they were still good when we got rid of them. Is what I'm yeah, saying. no, they were. Yeah, they still were like perform. They weren't scrubs at that point. Like they still would have started. Lindsley, I mean, Lindsley was all pro uh, <laughs> last year, so. Yeah. Our final tier is tier four. These are positions we do not want to draft at all. So we'll mm -hmm. go through these pretty quickly. I'm just going to list them all off, say what I have to say about them, and then Blake can fill in what I miss. These are quarterback, kicker, long snapper, and tight end. At quarterback, we obviously have Aaron Rodgers, and we drafted Jordan Love in the first round last year. Yeah. We lost Tim Boyle, our third string, but we'll 
we just need to sign an undrafted right. free agent. Right. We're not using a pick. We don't really care there. Kicker, mm-hmm. we have Mason Crosby. He did struggle a couple of years ago, but he did really well long, last year. Really, really well last year. year. Yeah, he was great. And then long snapper, I mean, you don't draft a long snapper. And yeah. <laughs> tight end, we drafted tight end last year. He did not get a lot of playing time. He played in a game or two. I think he played two games, had one reception. He was injured, though. And then we obviously just re-signed Robert Tanyan to another – was it one or two years? I think it was one, but we also re-signed Mercedes Lewis. We, we did re-sign two- Mercedes Lewis to two more years. So Robert Tanya obviously had double-digit touchdowns last year. Mercedes Lewis is the guy who comes in. He's a veteran, and he can, he's a really good blocker. But yeah. he can also catch a few balls. He doesn't have a lot of drops. And that's why those four positions really just do not draft them, Packers. And we didn't mention punter, but that could be a need if, like, sixth or seventh round, if they don't like J.K. Scott, who's – Mm-hmm. Not been the best, but I yeah, guess he was really good, and then he just kind of yeah. Don't know what happened weird. He looked fine. It they could draft a guy. It's I just don't think it's like too pressing to mm-hmm. have a big discussion about. 